I am so excited to see so many people that have joined our session. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to begin uh, with just a little bit of some housekeeping uh, information. Um, the first is this is a session for University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee students who are admitted to the computer science master's program for fall 21. Um, as we go through the presentation, we have a handful of people that are here to talk to you today. Um, and in order to make it go as smoothly as possible, we are requesting that everyone in the session that's not pre a presenter, um, please keep your cameras off um, and please keep your account muted. That makes it a nicer and a smoother presentation for everyone that's listening, especially those that may have some connectivity issues. So if you're just listening into the session, if you're not presenting, please keep your cameras off um, and your uh, computer muted, um, so your microphone muted, so that we can have as clear of a presentation as possible. Um, you'll notice in the Zoom format, there is a chat option. If you have questions along the way, please feel free to use the chat function um, to submit your questions. We will have plenty of time to answer those questions. Um, and so that's how you can let us know what you're wondering about and we're happy to, to answer those questions. Um, for those of you, uh, if you could take a look at the name that you have on your Zoom account, um, if it doesn't match the name that you use to, be, uh, to apply and be admitted to UWM, if you could please change it to that for us. Uh, UWM, our College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, has these really fancy um, engineering pens. They're, they're a, a pen, but it has several tools incorporated in it, and they're really great for uh, engineers. And we are happy to give one to you as a reward for attending this session today. Um, we'll give it to you when you arrive on campus. But the only way we can do that is if we know who you are. So if you could please go into your Zoom account and change your name to the name that you applied and were admitted to UWM, that would be fantastic. It would really help us uh, know who attended the session today um, and make sure you get that fancy pen when you arrive on campus. Thank you. Um, so we're gonna start the discussion uh, for today. Uh, we have some different people on. If you've attended one of these sessions before, you'll be excited to hear that we have some new people to talk to you today. Um, so I am Jen Singer. Some of you know my name, I'm part of the uh, international admissions team at UWM and uh, work with you when you submitted your documents and other things. So thank you. It's so nice to meet all of you. And I look forward to seeing you in person. Um, we also have um, Professor uh, Molly here from the computer science Hi. program. Um, he is one of our, the faculty members and he'll be talking to you about the computer science program. Um, we also have a Koth here who's a current uh, computer science master's program. And then we also have Priyal Shah, who is UWM's representative in the South Asian region. Um, so each of, the, each of these people are gonna talk to you a little bit today about some important things. Um, so let's get started. Um, I'd like for Priyal to please uh, introduce herself and just talk to you about the kinds of things that Priyal does and, and the reasons that you might be interested in contacting her. Thank you, Priyal. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. I'm Priyal Shah. Um, it, is, it is good to uh, meet everyone in the uh, session like this. Um, I have been working with the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee since last, uh, since past uh, three, three years. Um, I have been handling the overall admissions and operations for the South Asia region. Um, and uh, it, it has been fantastic. I uh, so, uh, like, you know, students who are, um, have any queries related to the, uh, like, you know, applications procedure or, um, like, you know, program information or any queries would, like, you know, uh, I, I, like, you know, would love, would love to, like, you know, um, help and uh, in every way I can. And um, um, I have overall of, like, you know, nine years of experience in education sector and I'm based out in, out of Gujarat, India. Um, we have our uh, Facebook, uh, like you know, page which is uh, like you know, face University of Wisconsin Milwaukee South Asia page. Um, so you can also check the uh, like you know latest updates. You like you know can get on the uh, like you know Facebook page. Also in chat, I will mention my details. You can reach out to me. You can email me. You can call. You can WhatsApp. 
um, I'll be more than happy to assist in um, every ways I can. So thank you. I'll be like, you know, uh, happy to connect with you all. I'm pretty much sure like, you know, students from South Asia would have already have connected on calls and you all have my details. Uh, so in, uh, like, you know, if you have any questions, queries, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll uh, now hand over to Jen. Thank you, Priyal. <laughs> Um, I know that not all of our students here today are from South Asia, but many are, and, and you probably have already connected with Priyal. She's fantastic and a wonderful resource. So if you need any help, please feel free to reach out to her. Um, next, I'd like to turn it over to um, Akaf, who is a current student in the Computer Science Master's Program. Um, Akaf, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and telling them a little bit about yourself, and then I have some questions for you. Thank you. Oh, so hello everyone, I'm Akit Pradhan and like I'm currently a master's student at UWM and I'm also doing an internship in Milwaukee till currently and so first of all I would like to congratulate you guys because you're coming to a wonderful university with like everything is so well designed over here and like you're definitely going to have a very good time over here. Yeah. Then you can ask me the questions like if you have. Uh, sure. Um, so the first is, um, can you tell us about your experience in the computer science master's program? Um, and specifically, I know that you're in the professional track. Can you mm -hmm. tell us uh, what you like about that and your favorite courses? Yeah. So for me, uh, because I was from an electronics background, I didn't have, like I had coding experience, but like not to a level which they taught over here at UWM. And even, you know, if I being true, like the level of coding which they teach in India and like the depth which they go over here at UWM is, you know, very much. So like from the pro point of professional track, like if being in a professional track, the like the best advantage is that like you get lots of hands-on coding assignments and hands of coding practice. So like you will have a really good hold over coding stuff. And like then it goes moves down to the algorithm for the next part of your uh, masters and like the algorithm courses like professor cheng she's really good and like you're really going to have very good hold over algorithms too if you attend that class and like which can make you you know job ready any day like that is what you need for a like to get a job at the united states yeah akath you mentioned getting a job can you mm -hmm. share with the, st the the students on the call today about your experience with having a job and an internship? Yeah, so uh, about getting a job, you know, it depends on your luck too, but it's just that I feel like if you have put in all the hard work, you will definitely get the job. And like from being like, what do I say? It's like uh, about making connections. How do you reach out to people? How do you like connect over LinkedIn? You can reach out to anyone. Now there is like this career fair at UWM and I got my job through the career fair which took place, which was a virtual meeting, which they had. And like, I met Milwaukee to my employer over there. And like, I talked to them, you just need to, you know, you just need to tell them like what you are doing and how much like you're interested in learning and what are your passions and trust me, like you'll definitely get an interview call after that. And like, if you have like all the, like, if you're done the assignments correctly, if you have solved a bit of lead code, I think not just the easy questions i think you are good enough to like get a job over here at, uh like in the milwaukee region and, Great. yeah and then the thing is like if you talk about milwaukee like a lot of the companies which are over here in milwaukee all of the people who like the employees who work there they are an alumni from uwm so they actually have an idea like how the uh, course over coursework over here at UWMS. So like whenever you say something to them, like it makes sense to them because you know they have also been in the same shoes some years back. So like if you want to get a job in Milwaukee, like getting a master's degree from UWM will definitely boost up your chances of getting a job. Akath, would you um, be willing to share with the students what your internship is and, and the types of things that they're that you do so they have an idea of, of what they could potentially expect? 
Yeah, so it, so it basically depends on the profile which you go for. So I'm a software engineer intern. So what uh, Milwaukee Tool is very much, you know, a product based company. So what my task is like, I have to like, we are making smart tools. So I so we basically collect the data from the tools because of some chip it has and like we process the data in such a way like so that it, people can perform analytics in that data and basically i work with the front end as well as uh, back end and my job is basically you know to like in uh basically more of it is front end so i work with react a lot and i have to like uh, make the front end look good for the website and how you, you we just our job is to make the work easy for the service people as well as the people who are working with the tools like they have this app or they can open you know the website for the tool and i basically work in that website thank you that sounds very very interesting mm -hmm. um you mentioned earlier about making professional connections i'm wondering about personal connections can you talk a little bit about social connections and and how you connect with other students and you know what's it like to be a student outside of the classroom what's it like to be a student at uwm uh well being true you know like uh, when i came the pandemic had hit so you know i couldn't get out much like to make a lot of friends but the thing is like once uh, so it's like everything there are a lot of things through which you can get social you know like there is this on campus job and uwm is best about that because every student gets an on campus job over here so when you go to the on campus like to do your on campus job you meet a lot of people from different backgrounds and so like you get more exposure you know and on top of that like people over here in milwaukee are very friendly too so if you just go to the beach which is right by you know right near the university so you can see a lot lot of people over there and they even invite you to play games with them so you can go over there play volleyball the beach volleyball or you can just sit in the sand and you can like really make a lot of friends over there and you know i luckily met some people in the bus too like when i was traveling to and fro and in the university like uh, if you'll see I, I like there are a lot of student organizations like you know which actually help you to socialize but the fact was like because i was when i came it was like the pandemic had just started so like not many student organizations took were that active so yeah like i i was not that much social like in the if you could say in the university but i was like more i have made more friends to the on-campus job as well as like outside it must have been a very challenging way to start your studies at uwm right at the beginning of the pandemic yeah it really was like you know when it the pandemic wasn't there like you used to the go you used to go to campus you would see a lot of students over there and you know like there were some of the other events going on every day you know so like you you can just go and say go there and say hey i want to take part in this event and they're like small events you know like just for 15 to 20 minutes it will take so they'll be like happy to help and you know best part is you even get something free out of that like some free gifts or something and it's like fun very nice i uh, i do agree with you that at the very beginning of each new semester our campus is very busy with activities there's a mm -hmm. lot of opportunities of course, because of the pandemic, that has slowed down, but we're starting to open up again. And so we're hoping to have that fun atmosphere again this fall. Um, can you share with um, the students what you like about uh, Milwaukee and then also uh, your mm -hmm. access or experience in um, enjoying Chicago as well? Okay. Uh, like, I'll just answer Prasanna once. Prasanna, I'm interning with Milwaukee Tool currently. Like, she asked me a question. And about milwaukee you know like the best part about milwaukee is like what should i say like if you come here and like if you get a job here so uh, there was this ranking which came and like if you're starting your career early in the united states milwaukee was the second best place to live in and the reason about that is like you know in milwaukee the thing is everything is really cheap over here very very cheap because i went to chicago and I, over there a gallon of milk was something like 4.5 dollars and here in milwaukee it's just 1.5 dollars so you can just see the difference like how much money you'll be saving like when you'll come when you'll be coming to milwaukee and the another good part about milwaukee is like you know it's it's like not 
as fast paced as chicago or california but at the same time it's not that slow as well like you can get every good things over there there are like a lot of malls a lot of good places to roam nearby and there are a lot of islands too like if you get a chance to explore so it like it is like if you have if you have free in weekends you can visit a lot of places over here and then one more another good part about it is like the mcts like the bus transportation like i haven't been to much places here in united states but i can see like the places which i have been to milwaukee had the best connectivity like the mcts buses which run over here you can like you know go from one corner of milwaukee to any corner like that to free because our like university pays for that like we get free bus passes so initially like not everyone has a car so you don't need to worry about transportation at all so like these are also some good things about milwaukee and yeah it's like when it is december i know like it's very dull over here like after november for six months but yeah that's okay like anywhere you go in midwest it's the same so but the thing is when it's summer the city gets you know how much dull it was 10 times more you know it it is like very much sporty it, it is very much alive so it's a really good city if you are like starting your career early in united states thank you akath i'm amused by your comments about the city in in the winter time um for our students that come to us from south asia they often are afraid of the of the winter right they're afraid of the mm -hmm. cold and i would just like to say that Obviously, Akath is here with us today, and he's still smiling. So he survived the he survives the winter, um, and he's and he's still happy to be here. So, like, um, I say something, Jen. Yes, please. Yeah. So about winter, you know, like you don't need to worry much because over here in uh, like Milwaukee, all of the houses have very good heating system. So like you don't need to worry much about winter, you know, because even in winters, like when you'll be sleeping at night, you'll be like covering yourself with a blanket not with a blanket like you need to switch on a fan because of the heating system it gets such a warm over here and like you would be much exposed to the you know what do i say to the uh like the cold climate because after six o'clock our university has a service which is known as boss so which is like you know a free uh, service like an uber which is free for students and you can use that to travel within five miles of bit like among in a five miles radius within the uh, 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 university so it's like you you won't be much exposed to the cold but it's just that when you'll be traveling like when you'll be going to the classes with the like for bus so you just you'll be exposed to that cold for like you know just five to ten minutes that's it so it's not like that of a big issue it's just that in winter you won't be seeing people that often because it gets dark really by four or five o'clock but that is also okay yes thank you for that um my last question for you akath is if you could please um do you have any advice for students that might be looking for housing uh for housing you know what i feel is like you should never book an apartment from india like or any place where you are coming from because the thing is uh, when you come over here the when like when you actually see a house you know you will get to know how it is and i have seen it like like from my batch all of the people who came none of them booked the house from india or from any like from the country which they were coming from because the thing is like eventually everyone will get in housing you know like there are a lot of people posting in uwm sublet as well as you know there are like a lot of apartments nearby and even though it's not nearby I, as i told you the bus connectivity is really good so you can reach to the university with, like within two to ten minutes like i'm like being true so i feel apartments there are like a lot of apartments over here and which are really cheap and like i know like you may not get it using apartments.com because even we didn't get it even after have like living here for one and a half years so the best part over here is you come here and like you stay in someone else's house like ask them can i stay in your house for like one week or so then in that one week time frame you can search for a house like which you like and which is like you know in accordance to what you are willing to pay because i have seen like people who booked from uh when like from their home country they paid triple the deposit for the rent like which doesn't make any sense like just because you are 
you feel like you won't get a housing over there but it's not like that everyone gets a housing and last time in spring i remember like when people came they were like in my home they were literally six people and uh, like i helped like not like there were 12 people who wanted a housing and they didn't have any option but eventually all of them they got a housing which they wanted so i'll suggest like it's good you know to search for apartments but i'll say it's better like to confirm it once you come here and there is there is this candlelight apartment and then there there are even apartments in shorewood but they get up pretty like very costly not that costly like but i i feel like if you are a student that's a bit on the higher side and there are like lot of you know uh what do i say apartments nearby and even if you don't get an apartment what you can do is like you can like make a group of three to four people and you can rent a townhouse you know uh, at the townhouse are really good like they're cheap also but the only disadvantage is like the electricity bill is somewhat high but that is also an op option so i i'll say like don't rush like you still have got a lot of time because being true like if i say my thing it was like uh, my classes were starting on 21st jan and like because of visa problems i came on 26th of jan like five days later and i was not even enrolled in any courses and i was like very much worried like whether i'll get admitted to any course or not because every courses were full but you don't need to worry about that too because i remember sending a message to professor mali like professor because of visa issues i am late can i enroll in your class and he was like yeah definitely and he enrolled me like within 2 to 3 days so i'll just say enjoy your time in india and like i'll just say do a bit of java coding before coming here and like a bit of data structures instead of like you know worrying about housing and all because everyone will eventually get one thank you so much akath i really appreciate your viewpoint and i and i think the students do as well um us administrators can talk all we want but hearing it from another actual student is really important so thank you so much mm -hmm. um i'm going to transition now um over to another presenter just want to send out a reminder to those of you that are listening that if you have any questions along the way uh, please put them into the chat. You're welcome to submit questions for any of us, for um, Priyal, for Akath. Um, and then next up, I'm going to introduce Professor Molly. Professor Molly is a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science, and he can talk to you a little bit um, about the program. Welcome, Professor Molly. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Molly, so, we know that, oh, sorry, please go uh -huh. ahead. Uh, no, no, you go ahead. Um, I just was gonna say that I know that from the questions we've received from some of our students, um, that there is um, some questions about um, the difference between the professional track and uh, the research track and how students are selected to go into each of those tracks. Could you uh, uh, address that for the students today, please? Okay, so, you know, for professional track, you don't uh, need background in hardware and you are not required to take hardware courses, specifically CS315, which is computer organization and assembly language programming. You are also not required to take, uh, uh, or you are not required to have taken CS458, which is computer architecture. But then students in regular track, uh, are required to take those or they should show that they took courses equivalent to these courses uh, in their country. So, you know, hardware courses uh, is one uh, point of difference. The second is number of credits. If you are in regular track and you do thesis, you can graduate with 30 credits if you do capstone project in regular track, you will need 31 credits. But in professional track, you do need 31 credits. So if you do thesis, you need one credit less. Um, also, if you are in professional track, you can do a project in industry and then uh, use it instead of a capstone project, as long as the committee of three professors is uh, happy with your project. And that allows you to take some other course. Uh, 
also students in professional track uh, can graduate in three or four semesters but students who do thesis uh, usually take four semesters it is difficult for them to graduate in three semesters because thesis credits uh, need to be taken over at least uh, two semesters also i want to mention that uh, you know the regular track is uh, is research track uh, if you do thesis if you do capstone project uh, um, you know you may be doing something very applied and um, it will it may involve uh, little research great could you um uh, elaborate on on um how the decision is made from the faculty in terms of who goes into the professional track versus research and then also if the student is um confused about why they were placed into one track or another is there some you know how how do they address that you know faculty look at the grades uh, that uh, the student got in uh, previous study and they also look at you know whether the student has published papers uh, how much computer science by background the student has so a student might have got great grades uh, in undergraduate studies but if the student uh, has very little background in computer science or if the student uh, uh, you know has uh, weak grades in uh, programming courses or courses in theoretical computer science uh, the student may be admitted to professional track and then they can um, you know get a good grades here if they get get gpa of 3 and 1/2 or higher uh, based on uh, nine credits from graduate courses they can switch to regular track great thank you we have a question in the chat um, that's about what we're speaking about right now, so I'm going to read it out. Um, is there any difference between professional track level one and professional track level two? Yes, it's based on the you know uh, programming background you have. So yes, you know some students, uh, I mean, are required to. take uh, you know the three programming courses uh, the 201 251 and um, 351 which are introduction to computer programming uh, intermediate computer programming and data structures and algorithms but some uh, may be required to take 251 and 351 and some may be required to take just 351 so you know the depth of programming background you have uh, makes difference there also i want to say that um, you know there is a a placement exam here so you can appear for that and uh, if you do well in that exam you can avoid taking these courses the introductory programming courses uh, course and then the intermediate programming and cs351 uh great um we have another question uh, related to what you're talking about and it's asking about um what the levels of the subjects indicated um so for example the course numbers like 751 and 535 does the higher level mean that the subject course will be tougher not necessarily uh, you know in fact i will say 535 is tougher than 751 and you have to also look at uh, uh, what uh, precedes the course number 751 is compest course and compest stands for computer studies so you know usually computer studies courses are easier than computer science courses but it also depends on the specific topics so i suggest looking at the syllabus uh compest courses uh, you know they are meant for 
students in professional track and students who are in another degree at UWM, which is MSIST, and that is a Master of Science in Information Science and Technology. And students in MSIST are in School of Information Studies. So certainly higher level doesn't uh, necessarily mean that the course is tougher. I will also suggest, uh, you know, looking at uh, how the coursework uh, is distributed. I mean, how much weight do exams carry? How much weight uh, do homeworks carry? And I also suggest uh, looking at the, you know, number of, uh, I mean, number of homeworks, exams. So the toughness of course depends on uh, multiple factors. Uh, great, thank you. Um, someone else now is asking, do we have to enroll in any other courses um, or, uh, sorry, do we have to enroll to any other courses or we have to select them um, only from the computer, the Comp ST or computer science? If you are in professional track, you have actually more freedom in taking courses that are not uh, ComSci or ComPST. You can take courses from business school. You can take courses from healthcare administration. Uh, you can even take courses from School of Information Studies. So that's one difference between professional track and regular track. You can take more courses from other departments besides computer science. Great, thank you. Professor Molly, could you, uh, another question that we frequently get from our uh, new students, um, if you could please address for everyone, is the opportunity for uh, funding, any financial support that might be available from computer science? Well, uh, computer science uh, offers uh, financial support in multiple ways you know you can be a project assistant uh, or a teaching assistant or research assistant and there are levels for e uh, for each of these like 33 percent appointment 50 percent appointment during uh, fall and spring if it is 33 percent appointment you are required to work for about 13 hours per week if it is 50% appointment, uh, you are required to work for about 20 hours per week. And uh, you, know, you can also get financial support in the form of uh, hourly payment if you are a grader, but then that pays less than uh, assistantships. Also, you know, students in professional track are not uh, eligible for financial assistance from computer science, but they can get financial assistance from other departments. So they could be teaching assistants or research assistants or project assistants in departments outside computer science. And then, uh, you know, the UWM also offers chancellor awards and they can uh, pay up to $5,000 per year. And then the, if you get chancellor award, you, you are not required to work uh, like project assistants or uh, teaching assistants or research assistants. But for chancellor awards, uh, some faculty member should nominate you. So you should have done well in that faculty members course and ideally you should have done well in uh, research also. Great, thank you. We, mm -hmm. uh, before we move on, we do have a couple of questions that are specific to what you've been talking about. So I'll go ahead and, and read those now. Um, the first is, you, is uh, you said 751 is for the professional track. What if I take Comp ST 751 and two other subjects? Will I be eligible to change my track later from professional to regular? Okay, you will be able to if you uh, if the GPA is three and a half or above, and I will suggest uh, taking graduate courses. You know, uh, courses at seven hundred level or above. Uh, you know, those nine credits. 
Um, speaking of the nine credits, someone is asking if they're allowed to take more than nine credits of graduate level credit courses. You can take uh, more than nine credits in a semester. That's okay. But then remember that all graduate students at UWM and they, that means MS and PhD students, they are required to maintain GPA of three or higher. So you can uh, take more courses, but uh, make sure that, uh, you know, the, your GPA doesn't fall below three because uh, if GPA is below three, you will be on academic probation. Yeah, so what I hear you saying is that you can take more than nine, but um, it can be a challenge because that's a lot of work. Well, right? it can be a lot of work and I will suggest looking at syllabi and maybe, um, I mean, uh, seeing the nature of work. I mean, if you are taking uh, four courses in a semester and they are equivalent to 12 credits and all of them involve a lot of programming, it could be difficult to get uh, uh, good grades and ensure that your GPA is three and three or above. So, so I would suggest looking at the specific courses. Great, I mean, most, thank you. Most students uh, I have seen uh, take uh, nine credits uh, uh, per semester. So that means generally three courses. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna move on um, now and um, shift the conversation a little bit. Um, reminder that if you have questions, um, listeners, please put them in the chat. We will, um, we will address them. There's a couple of questions there that we haven't answered yet. And I promise you that we will get back to those questions. Uh, but I'm gonna shift the conversation just a little bit because I wanna make sure that I have um, enough opportunity to tell you the information that you need. Um, and then we'll shift back to the questions. Thank you so much, Professor Molly. We really appreciate it. I know that we're going to be back to you um, in a few minutes as we answer more questions. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to shift now. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of the information that's available for, to you uh, regarding your transition to the campus. I know we got a lot of students with questions about um, how to get to campus and um, orientation and things like that. So I just want to address that for you a little bit. And I want to start, I'm going to share my screen. Um, I'm going to start by sharing with you um, a website that we have um, that is for our newly admitted international students. This site is on the web, this site, it's within UWM. It's called IEEE Connect. And this is the site that we use for our international students. So um, many of you are probably already familiar with it. This is the site you go to where you log in to upload your proof of funding and passport copies and, and things in order to get your I-20 for your visa application. Um, it has this section here at the very top. Um, and this is the part we're gonna look at in just a moment. It's for our newly admitted students and it has all the information that you need um, in order to get yourself here for the first time. But then as you, uh, are a student at UWM as you go through your program, this is the site you're going to use for all of your immigration and international student issues. So if you're looking for information about, um, uh, you know, your, your ability to work, um, you know, travel, all of that stuff, all of that information will be in the site. Um, it's a portal. So you'll, so when you're doing those things, you can actually log in and provide documentation directly into the system. Um, it's very, it's a very nice um, setup for international students. But for today, I just want to look at this section for newly admitted students. You'll notice that we do um, a session it's very similar to what we're doing today, um, but we're, but it's for all students, not just those in computer science. Um, so we have an upcoming one this Wednesday that you're welcome to join. And we also have a recording of our most recent session. And then if you scroll down here, there's a whole bunch of information. So I'm not gonna show you everything, but just a couple of highlights is under the section, this very first tab, the fall 2021 options, um, you see there's information. And if you click on these different things, you'll be able to get more information. So if you're not sure you're gonna make it and you wanna consider starting online from home, you can click here uh, and get um, more information. Um, 
So that's under this fall 2021 options. Your three choices essentially are to come in person, start online from home, or defer your admission. Um, you can go through these steps right uh, yourself. There's uh, lots of different information in here. Um, each of them has different information. Um, for example, in here under the arrival to campus, if you click on there, you will see information about when to arrive, uh, Panther Pickup, we provide a service where if you fly into Chicago O'Hare, we will pay for the ticket for you to take the bus um, from Chicago directly to downtown Milwaukee, and then you can be responsible for getting yourself to wherever it is that you're actually going. Um, a lot of these things require you to sign up. Um, you'll have to log in with your ePanther ID and password, um, but you'll find all of this information in here. Um, the most important thing that I want to show you is this last one called Contact Us. So if you have any questions along the way about your I-20, about arrival, about anything that you need, um, you, are, you should be in touch with us right away. All of you should be very familiar with this email address, this IS at uwm.edu. You are welcome to uh, email that or respond to a previous email uh, searching for help. Um, it is monitored by several staff members um, every day, all day. So it's a really good way to get a quick answer. Um, you are welcome to call us um, during our business hours. We do have a human that is answering the phone um, that can help you and either help you set an appointment or get you to the right information. Um, the best ways, um, the best way in my opinion to get in touch with this is this chat function. So as a UWM student, you have access to the Microsoft suite that comes with um, being a student at the university, including Microsoft Teams. Um, and so if you, go, if you log into Teams, so you download it onto your phone or your computer, log in using your ePanther ID and password, um, then you can come to this page and click on this chat now and it will actually send an instant message to the entire international admissions team um, and we typically answer those within a couple of minutes. So it's a really great way um, for you to get a quick answer. Remember that you might be in a different time zone as us. So if you're sending a message outside of our business hours, it might take a little bit longer to reply, um, but it's a really great way to get information. And you also are welcome to make an appointment to meet with one of us virtually. So if you click on this link down here, it'll take you to an online scheduler. You can see what types of appointments might be available. And then uh, whenever you sign up, we will figure out who's best to meet with you. And then you can have a virtual appointment. So we'll set up a meeting with you in Microsoft Teams um, so that we can see each other and talk and figure out what you need and, and make sure you get the information that you need. Okay. Um, so please, um, you know, I know that uh, many of you are in different stages of getting here. Um, some already have an I-20, some already have a visa. Um, we want to do whatever we can to support um, you in getting here. So please let us know what we can do. Okay. Uh, fantastic. Thank you. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and I'm going to go back to the chat. Um, okay. So I'm going to address the questions um, related to what I was talking about first, and then we can shift um, to another subject. Um, so there's a question regarding Panther pickup. Will we be sent a paid bus ticket through the email and can I take the first bus to Milwaukee after exiting the airport? Or will there be a university official at the airport to meet and pick us up? Um, so our Panther pickup service is actually just us partnering with uh, Coach USA, which is a private bus company that runs the bus all the time. Um, if you are coming outside of the window of when we're offering that service, you can still take the same bus. Uh, we just won't be able to purchase the ticket for you. Um, there will not be a university official at the airport, unfortunately, uh, because we just don't have the staff to have someone at the airport for um, that long of a time every day. Um, but we will purchase, as long as you register and let us know that you're coming, we will purchase the ticket for you uh, and send it to you through email. And we also will include very detailed instructions uh, on how to use the ticket, where to go, where to find the bus, um, the Coach USA bus goes um, all, uh, about every hour, um, all day from early in the morning until late at night. Um, and you come out of the airport and you just get on whichever bus is next. Uh, the ticket is not specific to a specific time. Um, it is labeled with a specific date, um, but then they're very flexible about uh, using it the next day if you're late or something like that. 
Um, so you just come out and whatever the next bus is that is available for you to get on, you get on it and go. Uh, you don't need to worry about it. So if your plane is late or you get you know stuck going through the uh, passport control and it takes longer than expected or you know whatever your delay is, um, you don't have to worry about making your making your bus. The only exception is that if you arrive late at night, um, if you're arriving late at night into Chicago O'Hare, uh, you want to make sure that you check that bus schedule to see on that day when the last bus is going. Um, and there is the possibility that you might need to um, stay at a hotel or somewhere else at, in Chicago and then get up and take the bus the next morning. Uh, and while that might seem like a, a, a hardship, I will say that um, it's not going to be any worse than arriving in Milwaukee in the middle of the night. So um, it's, it would probably be best to do that anyway. Um, the other thing is, um, am I supposed to take a COVID test after three days of arrival once or will, uh, once or will that be enough? Am I supposed to take multiple COVID tests in the first week? Um, so uh, UWM is recommending that you be tested uh, within three days of your arrival um, at UWM. Um, and, and at this point, they're only recommending that, that first test. And, and as long as it comes back negative, they're not recommending anything else. Um, we do have a vaccination clinic. So for students that are arriving that are not vaccinated, um, you can get uh, go through that process once you arrive. Um, the, the vaccines that they currently have available are the Moderna or the Pfizer. Um, and you, I don't think you're typically given a choice. It's whatever is available at the time is when you come in is what you get. Um, but with both of those vaccines, you get one shot and then you get the second one three weeks later. And then you're considered fully vaccinated two weeks after that. So it can be a five week process to become fully vaccinated from the, the day that you start. Um, and the way that um, UWM has decided to address vaccination is it's not required of anyone. So if you're not vaccinated and you choose not to be vaccinated, that's your choice. Um, but only students that are vaccinated are allowed to be on campus and in classroom spaces without a mask. So if you choose not to be vaccinated, um, then you're going to be required to wear a mask whenever you're on campus. Um, in any capacity, okay? Um, if you go to uh, UWM's information about COVID, um, you'll find there's, I can provide the link for you in the chat, but there's a whole section about new students coming in and talking about vaccinations and quarantine. Um, UWM is requiring uh, for students who are living on campus, so they're living in our dormitories, they are requiring um, a quarantine period um, and some testing um, and things. But for our students who are living off campus, um, those things are recommended, but they are not required. Um, and UWM will not be monitoring it or uh, following up to make sure that you're doing it. So we're uh, working on the honor system and assuming that you are uh, being responsible um, for your health and the health of those around you. Okay. Um, a reminder that if you have questions about anything, please um, put them into um, the chat and uh, we can address them. Um, so we have a question, is it okay to get fully vaccinated from your home country? The answer is absolutely yes. Um, uh, what I would recommend is that, um, and I, I'll find the website, when I'm done talking, I'll go find the website and put it in the chat. Um, but there is a list um, put out um, that from an, uh, an official organization of which, um, which vaccines are considered acceptable um, in the US because there's lots of different types of vaccines worldwide um, and not all of them are recognized in the US. Many of them are, but not all of them. And so I'll put a link to that in the chat. So you might wanna just double check that the type of vaccine that you've received is on that list. Um, most of them are, I haven't seen any students that have gotten a vaccine that wasn't on the list, but it's wise um, just to check, okay? Um, okay, um, I got admission from master's in computer science. Um, so we have a student who's gonna be arriving in Chicago on August 19th, and they're gonna miss orientation, which is held on August 18th. Um, are, is, can you verify, are you you're referring to the international student orientation or is that a computer science orientation?
Yeah, it's the International Student Orientation. So the, um, the, as a new international student, everybody's required to do the F1, J1 student orientation. Um, the orientation is held online um, for you to be able to go through the process, um, uh, learn everything you need to do at your own pace. Um, it's in a, a, something called Canvas, which is a system that UWM uses to do online courses. Um, and so you can actually register for that and start going through that process now. That's not something you have to wait for a specific date. Um, and then the meeting on um, August 18th is a follow-up to that orientation. Um, it's, not, it, it's recommended that you be there, but it's not required. If you're unable to be here by that date, um, they will be able to provide um, a follow-up online for you virtually that you'll be able to complete. Um, so don't worry about that orientation. Um, it's important that you do the online version, the Canvas course, and that is available to you now. Um, so my recommendation is that you go through that process, um, you know, start looking at that login, start going through that course. Um, but don't worry as much about the August um, 18th session. Um, if you are here and available, it would be fantastic. Um, but if, if not, they will follow up with you. Um, so that's not quite as critical. Okay. Uh, we have a student says he's registered for the orientation, but it's not showing up in Canvas. I'm sorry, I don't, um, I can't help with that. I, I'm not a technical person. Um, but if you email the ISSS email address, I'm going to put that in the chat for everyone. Um, if you email that address, they can have that forwarded to the right person who will be able to help you um, get access. Okay. Um, when are we supposed to pay tuition and how do we do it? So um, the way that our system works is that first you register for your classes. So if you haven't done that already, um, if you think you're going to be here in fall, then you should work with um, your faculty advisor in computer science to determine which courses are appropriate for you and get registered. Um, then um, over the summer, tuition will start calculating and anyone that's registered in classes will be charged tuition. You'll be able to see that in your pause account. Pause is the P-A-W-S, it's the system that we use where you register for classes, see your grades, um, pay your bills, everything. Um, so you'll start seeing the tuition due. The tuition is due on the first day of classes. Um, so when you begin your classes um, that first day, um, that's when you should be, uh, you you're need to pay your tuition. Um, and um, if you, you have two choices in, in paying your tuition, the first is you pay the entire amount by the due date, uh, which is the first day of classes, um, or there is a payment plan option. And in order to do that, you have to pay at least $100 uh, towards the tuition that you owe by the first day of classes. Um, and if you do that, it will automatically put you into the payment plan, which uh, then changes, it, it essentially takes the amount of tuition you owe and it breaks it up into three different payments that you can then pay on a monthly basis um, and then have the tuition paid in full by the end of the semester. Um, but if you, in order to qualify for that payment plan, you have to have paid at least $100 by the first day of classes. If you don't, then you're no longer eligible for that and then everything is due immediately, okay? Um, when you um, pay your tuition, um, you're gonna, you have a couple of options. Uh, you can pay using a credit card directly through your pause account. Um, they do have it connected with a secure site with a bank. And so you can pay with, a, if you're paying with a credit card, you can pay directly through the PAUSE website. Uh, you also can pay uh, through wire transfer if that's more convenient for you. Um, you'll have to work with our bursar's office who will give you the details of where, the, where to wire the money. Um, and then they will apply it towards your account and mark it paid, okay? Um, Akoth, I noticed your comment about why your transfer is recommended. Would you like to share with everyone why you recommend that? It's just that you save money. <laughs> like paying through credit card, you need to pay a small fees, right? And in wire transfer, it's usually very low. And like for credit card, I guess you need to pay 2% of the amount you're paying. So that is like... Yeah, and when you're paying tuition, that's a lot of money. So 2% adds up really fast, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So um, I'm going to shift back um, some of the questions that we received. Um, Professor Molly, 
Um, we received um, some questions about um, um, we have someone who who um, mentioned um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to scroll back in these questions here. Um, quest, some technical questions about the courses and how they apply to the computer science master's program. Um, so for example, I got a placement level one. Um, so CS251 and CS351 needs to be completed. If I enroll for classes, do I need to enroll in these two courses? Um, and will the credits count towards my master's degree credits? Well, if you are in professional track, uh... Some credits uh, from COMPST courses at 700 level and above will count. Uh, so I suggest uh, looking at the course level. Uh, now, you are required to take 251 before CS351, but you can certainly register for other courses. Uh, there are many courses that at 700 level you can register for uh, in the first semester. But I will suggest taking the courses that are mentioned there as soon as possible because you will find that background useful in other courses. But there should be no problem in uh, finding courses to get six or nine credits uh, in the first semester with that requirement. Great, thank you. Um, so this is on a similar question. It says, um, so to change track, they need to only take 700 plus level courses at nine credits. Um, and maintain GPA of three and a half or above. Okay, and then they'll be, they, they'll be able to change the track or they can be considered to change the track. Well, I mean, they have to request uh, for change of track and, uh, you know, if they satisfy the requirement, uh, you know, they will be allowed to change the track. It's not automatic. So they have to request. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank then you. I also oh. heard your comments about Coach USA. <laughs> I don't want to get into that area, but I do know that uh, Coach USA has uh, stops at multiple places in Milwaukee. They stop at Milwaukee airport. They stop at Milwaukee's railway station, which is next to Milwaukee's uh, bus station. So, and they may have other stops. So I think students will find it useful to know which stop they should get, get down at when they come to Milwaukee. Should it yes, be airport or downtown or somewhere else? Yeah, thank you for that, um, that, uh, that comment. Uh, when we purchase the Coach USA ticket and provide it to students, we give them very elaborate instructions on um, how to use it and how, how to use the bus and how to decide where to get off. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, someone asked for clarification about, says for professional track, we can apply for GAs, TAs, and departments other con than computer science. Can you confirm? Um, I can answer that and just say, yes, that's absolutely true. Any student can get an assistantship in any program on campus. Um, so that's definitely true. What I will say though is, that um, those programs also have students in them looking for GAs and TAs, right? So there's not, um, unfortunately, an unlimited pool of assistantships waiting to be handed out. Um, and so there is competition with other students to get those positions. And if you're applying for um, an assistantship in a department other than computer science, you'll be competing against the students that are actually in that program. And so um, unfortunately, there's, um, you know, not everybody's going to get one, uh, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so we have a question about, um, can we apply for the student ID and MCTSID after we arrive before classes start? Um, so what you need to do in order to uh, get your campus ID and to get your MCTS bus, which is the bus pass, um, is you need to have um, arrived, um, you need to be enrolled in classes and you need to have paid at least that initial payment. So I, I mentioned before that if you're interested in the, um, uh, the 
opportunity to pay over time the payment plan that you just need to pay um, $100 by the first day of classes. Uh, you need to have a paid at least that first amount in order to be eligible for your ID. Um, and so when you come to campus, you'll get your ID from the ID office. Um, you can upload your photo, your own photo online and then get your ID when you come to campus. Um, and then you use that ID to pick up your bus pass. Um, so you just need to be here in person and you need to have made at least that beginning initial payment, okay? Um, I do wanna be thoughtful about the time because I know that um, it is after 10 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock our time. Um, and the session was um, scheduled for one hour. Um, so I think I'm gonna address the last couple of questions that we have in here, but I do wanna say that if you have additional questions, you are welcome to um, send them to us um, by email and we will make sure that we get back to each and every one of you, okay? Um, so uh, we have a student asking about that an advisor is not assigned in their pause account um, and how do they get an advisor? Professor Molly, can you um, help students understand how they would figure out who their advisor is? And then another question um, that you can also address is where they can find the syllabus for any course. The name of advisor should have been mentioned on the letter uh, of acceptance to the program. It may take time for that name to show up in pause, but uh, they should know who the initial advisor is based on the acceptance letter. And then they can uh, fill change of advisor form to change advisor if they want later. Okay, I think, um, so just to clarify for students, um, when you were admitted into the program, you received an email that had an official admission letter um, that comes from the UWM Graduate School. Um, your advisor is not listed in that letter. What Professor Molly is referring to is the letter that comes from the, the um, College of Engineering and Applied Sciences um, that is a departmental congratulations letter and your advisor is listed in there. Um, so if you're having trouble finding that, let us know. Um, but that's what you should be looking for is the letter that's from the College of Applied, uh, Applied, uh, sorry, College of, Engin College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Um, and then can you please, uh, Professor Molly, the question about where they can find um, syllabi for the different courses? Well, uh... You know, once they register, they should be able to see the syllabi in canvas, but uh, if they want to, you know, know what the syllabus is earlier, you know, I can send them if they mention the course name. Uh, course catalog gives a, a brief uh, description of uh, topics in the course, but I understand that it doesn't give a lot of details like how many homeworks are there and uh, what their weight is how many exams are there and so on so i mean the, they can email me and you know they can also email uh, amanda who assists computer science and uh, you may know her email address uh, jen amanda mandy uh, in CES, I can send it to you and uh, maybe you can share. She, all professors send syllabi of their C courses to her and then it, the students can email her and get the, get the syllabi. Now she may not have the most recent ones. Uh, for example, you know, she, she may not have syllabi of uh, courses in uh, fall, but she will certainly have syllabi of courses offered in uh, spring this year. Uh, but again, I, I will say that, uh, you know, usually the syllabus doesn't change uh, over one semester or year drastically. You know, there may be minor changes like uh, changes in the number of homeworks or exams or their weights but the topics will probably not change within a short time, like uh, one semester or one year. 
but certainly they can email me and then uh, I will also, I will send them the syllabi or I will send them the email address of Mandy and then she can email the syllabi. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, we've got Mandy uh, Bauer's email address has is, is been provided in the chat. So everyone should be able to see that. So if you're interested in following up and looking and getting um, requesting some syllabi, that's where you can go. Um, I've also put in um, the IEEE's email address. So if there's any questions that you have about arrival that we didn't get to, you're welcome to put them there. Um, and I've also shared the link to our site for uh, newly admitted international students, that site that I show that has the contact information um, and things. Um, yes, and I uh, somebody asked about the vaccines. I will get that to that now. Um, so we're at the end of the session. I think we need to we need to end to be thoughtful about everyone's time. Um, I, I need just one minute so I can look for this vaccine information and then post it. Um, but to any of our presenters today, Priyal, um, Akath, uh, Professor Molly, does anybody have any final uh, thoughts that they'd like to share? Well, um, Jen, thank you so much for the session. It was and it is very, very informative. I'm pretty much sure maximum students' queries must be uh, resolved. Uh, well, basically, like you know, because of this pandemic, yes, students do have the like you know queries related to traveling and related to vaccines. But uh, would just like to share the thought that there is nothing to be worried about. Uh, all the information are like you know on the uh, uh, USA consulate website also on our website also related to the vaccination. So it is not that the vaccines are mandate. The students who have not took the vaccines will not be able to travel. Um, like, you know, uh, there are a few of the vaccines which students have took here and like, you know, and might be like, you know, there are uh, certain que questions that will be, will be like, you know, uh, what if uh, like, you know, those vaccines are not um like you know uh what we say allowed like, i mean those vaccines are not registered and they are not allowed to travel so it is nothing like that um the students who have not uh, like you know took vaccines can also be able to travel and the students who have took vaccines and uh like you know uh though if it is not even registered like you know in the WHO list then also they will be able to travel they have to follow certain policies and rules which might be like you know related to they need to get their uh, tests and but yeah that is nothing like there are difficulties in traveling thank you um priyal um, I have put in information into the chat about its UWM site um, about COVID-19. If you go there, you'll find all sorts of information. I find the most interesting and um, yeah. enlightening part is the frequently asked questions. If you go through, you'll find all sorts of information. Um, I also am um, posting in here um, a information about vaccines um, accepted by UWM. And that is actually... Um, so UWM is looking at who the World Health Organization, WHO, and the, the, so the list that I've um, put a link to is actually the list from the WHO um, and the vaccines that they, um, that they accept. Um, so I'm just gonna answer one final question. What document should we submit to the university on arrival? When you enter the US, uh, you need to arrange for a check-in um, meeting, so you have to, uh, you'll, you'll have the information in your IEEE Connect account, um, but you're going to click on that and submit your information, um, and it'll set you an appointment with one of our advisors who will have a virtual appointment with you. You're not going to come in person um, unless you meet some very specific criteria, um, and you'll meet with that person, and you'll have to provide um, information like a copy of your visa, a copy of your A20, a copy of the stamp and your passport. All of this information is things that will be processed as you're entering the US. So you cannot have this appointment until you're already physically in the US. 
Um, and, and then during that meeting, um, our advisor will go through some steps with you and make sure you have everything you need, help you identify places that you need to get more information. Um, don't forget that many of you are probably admitted on the um, condition that you provide your final transcripts or mark sheets. Um, if you're not sure, you can look in your pause account. There's a to-do list section and in there it will list for you exactly what we need. Bring those documents with you. There's no need to mail them in advance. Um, and then during that check-in meeting, they can help you understand what you should do with those. Make sure you get those to us within that first semester. Okay. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been just delightful to have all of you here. I've been very excited by the number of students that we have um, logged in. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. You can um, email me directly um, at that IS email uh, address. Um, I do check it um, on a very, very regular basis throughout the day. And so I will get the messages that you send there. Um, we wanna support you. We wanna make sure you have a fantastic experience arriving at UWM and then also throughout your program. Um, I wanna give a very special thanks to our guests today. Um, so thank you um, to Priyal Shah um, and to Akath Pradhan and also to Professor Molly um, who shared just some fantastic information. Um, we hope that it was helpful and useful um, and we really look forward to seeing you in person. Uh, so thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Vesh. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.